So if you're wondering what it takes to become a spiritual badass, i.e. spiritual awakening, self-realization, enlightenment, spiritual growth, etc., whatever you want to call it, there are eight phases. And these eight phases are the exact eight phases that I went through. And so I want to share them with you so that you know what to expect if you are new to spirituality, if you're looking to spirituality to improve your life, to find yourself, to know thyself, to be happier, more peaceful, etc. So these eight phases are uh, that I'm going to read to you right now are a compilation of my experience and experience of teachers that I've known and experience of other friends that I've known and uh, ex experiences of of uh, some students of mine. So here are the eight phases and enjoy. Phase one. In this phase, we start paying attention, listening and watching. Usually this is precipitated by a nagging feeling that something is missing or some aspect of our life has just turned upside down and we're now ready for an alternative spiritual solution. It's in this phase the confusion is common, and we might meander from video to video or book to book looking for instant enlightenment. Phase 2. Here we start to become more aware. Part of what the teacher is saying makes sense, at least in some primal, visceral way. They seem to be speaking the truth, and even more so embodying the truth. We might begin meditating. We might begin venturing out to see a teacher in person. We might sign up for an online course or a weekend workshop. We're basically becoming more serious and self-aware. Phase 3. Now we start to pick up on something that the teacher has been pointing to, self-inquiry or mindfulness. Mindfulness is the invitation to be completely self-aware during every waking moment, the good or bad of life. The point of this exercise is to discover that there is a vastly undervalued part of us that has gone unnoticed and undiscovered. Self-inquiry or mindfulness is the art of noticing an ever-present witness, watcher, or observer, and then benefiting from the gentle, peaceful clarity and openness that is generated by noticing it. Phase 4. We soon discover that being mindful isn't easy and frequently tumble back into having an unchecked and unaware mind and emotions. Even worse, our life seems to be crumbling and undergoing a revolution. This is the messy, rough and tumble part of the spiritual process, sometimes called dark night of the soul. And it usually continues all the way to final awakening or final realization of who you really are. What happens in this phase is that you or I begins to dismantle and is steadily replaced by the witnessing, watching, observing awareness. Phase 5. At the halfway point, we pretty much surrender to the process and accept it for what it is, a tough loving bitch. We meditate more, we sit with teachers more, we read more books, we attend more workshops and courses, we become more vulnerable, open-hearted, and at ease with all our flaws and imperfections. We laugh, cry, fail, win, have insights, and brief moments of non-abiding awakening, and then fail again. Non-abiding awakening is when you have an aha moment or insight that makes you feel really, really good, and then it goes away. Phase 6. The road gets rockier and bumpier and begins to swerve all over the place. The highs are high and the lows are low. We may attend a week-long workshop or an online course and find we are left feeling blissful for days after. Until, bang, we're dropped back down into the suffering of life again. It's a maddening process that leaves us with only one option. Surrender, accept, and hold on tight. Phase 7. We're now wondering if this shit will ever end. We can now recite verbatim every talk ever given by every non-dual neo advaita teacher on the marketplace. We get it. We no longer need their word. Instead, now just the mysterious energy or presence of the teacher or teaching feeds our soul. We start to spontaneously contain this blissful presence without help. 
It's surprising, delightful, and an achievement to be lauded. But oddly enough, something is still missing. There's still a slight sense of suffering or separation, a slight sense of incompleteness. Phase 8. Things quiet down. We're pretty much done with teachers and teachings. We've passed through crisis, revolution, fear, and anxiety. We've touched unity, bliss, and temporary states of complete undifferentiated awareness. Our apple is very ripe, and we rest simply waiting for the one gentle breeze to blow it to the ground. And lo and behold, one day it happens. And it happens in a way that is so subtle that oddly enough, we barely notice it. But something amazing and radical has occurred. We no longer feel that something is missing. We no longer feel separate. We no longer feel depressed. We realize who we are finally and forever.